It began when an unknown man from Denmark approached me with a proposition. This is him in his tiny apartment in the outskirts of Copenhagen. If this was a piece of fiction, no one would believe that he would be meeting with North Korean arms dealers in Africa. You can walk in here, no problem. Or going to the North Korean embassy in Sweden to pick up secret documents. If something happened, our embassy does know nothing about it. Exactly. But this is no fiction. Everything you are about to see is real and has been going on for more than 10 years. This is him age 14, somewhere in Denmark. He is celebrating his birthday. Among the guests are children who grew up in the communist dictatorship East Germany. Many years later, as a grown man, he will claim that befriending these kids and learning about the horrors of a totalitarian regime made him decide to infiltrate and expose the most brutal dictatorship of all. North Korea. It's a nice explanation, but exactly why he chose to place himself in mortal danger is also besides the point. What only matters here is that he is a mole. In the end, I had to hire an expert to help me sort it out. Annie Machong is a contentious figure in the intelligence world, but this does not concern me. I am only interested in her skills in debriefing agents. So, Annie, uh, the mole arrived last night, mm -hmm. and uh, soon he is ready for you. Do you have concerns? Maybe. We should discuss that after you have met the mole. Hi, Ulrich. I'm Hi. Annie. Hi, Annie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. I used to work for the British Security Service, otherwise known as MI5, and a part of my job as an intelligence officer was to debrief agents. So the film team has asked me in to debrief you about mm. your life over the last 10 years. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit more about him, his background? Um, you know, if he would rob a bank, you would not be able to describe him. Mm -hmm. um, he blends in. He blends in. Perfect. So, how did you get interested in North Korea? Oh, it's a long story. Um... It is a long story, so I will speed it up. Back in 2006, as a journalist from Denmark, I went to North Korea and shot a documentary called The Red Chapel. The regime in Pyongyang really hates my film, and because of that, I can never travel back to North Korea. Seen from a Western point of view, the film has its moments, but it does not offer up the smoking gun, the irrefutable proof that North Korea is an evil and criminal enterprise. Ever since, I have been on a quest to prove these points, yet being forever banned from the Chamber of Secrets. But back in Denmark, the man who I prefer to call The Mole saw my film, and somehow it gave him the idea that he could travel to North Korea in my place. Why not? Let's let go, and then I um, 
wrote a email to uh, Mass. Mm-hmm. Approximately 10 years ago, out of nowhere, he wrote and asked if I would be interested in doing a film about him infiltrating the Danish North Korean Friendship Association. So how old, I mean, what happened? Can you talk me through um, exactly the first steps you took in this and the sort of thought process you were going through? Uh, you mean with the Korean Friendship yes. Yeah, well, I found the Danish Friendship Association and the chairman, uh, Anders Christensen, he invited me to their first public meeting three weeks later. Mm -hmm. And he was the only person in the room when I came up um, trying to put up a North Korean uh, flag. And I went like I normally do, go say hello and want to shake hands. And I have such a, you know, very, it was not even a handshake, it was very like, mm. the hand slipped away. It was like, I think, okay, is this, is this a man or is he, I don't know. Jellyfish? Yeah. He was quite fast to tell people that this is a new member. Den demokratiske folkerepublik foretog i går kl. 11.57 lokaltid sin tredje atomprøvesprængning. Sprængkraften var betydeligt kraftigere end den for, de foregående prøvesprængningerne i 2006 og 2009. I told him, it could be of interest if it would evolve to something of international importance. Because the Danish North Korean Friendship Association in itself is a fairly depressing group of people. Mm -hmm. He said, please uh, keep me posted if it's interesting. And I was like, okay. I also told him I will never be able to pay you any money. Um, so, so that is not of importance for him. And then he just kept on going. The mole went down the rabbit hole and discovered a bizarre world of Danish senior citizens who are true fans of North Korea. <laughs> Slowly but surely, the mole advanced in the hierarchy and became a member of the board, working under chairman Anders Christensen, a die-hard communist. Here you have him back in his heyday, meeting with the founder of North Korea, eternal president Kim Il-sung, grandfather of the current ruler, Kim Jong-un. <laughs> All the time, the mole was filming. The excuse being that he was making movies for YouTube about his work as a board member. I'm a proud member of the board, and from here I have been fighting to defend the fantastic country of North Korea. But we need to be aware that people that today is our friend or comrades could be our biggest enemies tomorrow. There will be a fifth column of moles. We really need to be aware of that. So, how did things progress for you once you were a member and on the board? Well, my biggest wish was to visit North Korea, mm. of course. And to come there, you need to be a part of an association. The mole went to North Korea, and the North Koreans took a liking to him. His main contact person in North Korea was a man named Kang, who works for the Ministry of Cultural Affairs. Everything under control? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. All of us in Korea. Everything is in control. Kang is a key person in this tale of deceit and intrigue. We trust you and we really uh, treat you as friends, friends. Yes. But uh, uh, you, you have to understand that uh, the place is a bit uh, sensitive and maybe uh, the spies are interested in yeah, this yeah. kind of places, yeah. uh, military uh, yeah. places. So 
All the Korean people, they are very honored. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. Nice meeting you. Hello. Everywhere he went in North Korea, the mole was filming. Of course, he also brought his camera when he was awarded a medal, recognizing his work for the regime. OK, congratulations. Thank you. So when did things really start to move? When I was in North Korea in 2012, I met a Spanish person named um, Alejandro Cardebenas. Could you confirm that this is a photograph of him? That's him. Yeah? Yeah. He's the president of the Korean Friendship Association, KFA. And according to himself, there are hundreds of thousands of members around the world. Amongst the friends of the regime in Pyongyang, Alejandro Cardebenas is the biggest friend. Compared to a small group such as the Danish North Korean Friendship Association, the Korean Friendship Association is the international lodge for people who consider North Korea to be heaven on earth. Alejandro Cardebenas is the founder of the Korean Friendship Association and is known around the world as the gatekeeper of North Korea. As such, Alejandro Cardebenas was my tour guide and access ticket when I traveled to North Korea back in 2006. Here, we are posing for a North Korean newspaper. Spending time with him, I found it hard to understand why Alejandro, who was born in Spain and lives in Spain, has chosen a life as a cheerleader for North Korea. According to the UN, North Korea starves, abuses and kills its own citizens on a daily basis, but Alejandro Cardebenas considers all that to be fake news. Sabe que hay informes de Naciones Unidas, de Amnistía Internacional, que son muy duros. Sí, porque se utilizan como medios. El régimen político de Corea. Son medios de propaganda. I also discovered that his preferred foods are French pastry and candies, which is, I guess, the perfect diet for a supervillain. Do you think Alejandro is dangerous? Yes, I do, especially when he's in North Korea, mm -hmm. uh, because he had the power to react to things he don't like. Mm -hmm. He's a small dictator in his own universe. Alejandro Cabo de Venos. Podríamos decir que es usted el único occidental que entra y sale de Corea del Norte con facilidad y que representa a Corea del Norte, el único occidental del mundo. Sí, así es, primer y único occidental. You're a Spanish aristocrat representing the North Korean regime. What's in it for you? Well, it's a long story of 30 years, but although I come from an aristocratic family, I'm just a son of a worker. So I wanted to contribute for the construction of a socialist country. I created the Korean Friendship Association so I could facilitate the meeting and the bridge between DPRK and the rest of the countries in the world. Alejandro Cao de Venos, señor Cao de Venos, buenas noches. Lo que pretende Corea del Norte es simplemente asegurar su supervivencia y su futuro. No acaso es la única forma de hacerlo es desarrollando una disuasión nuclear. There will be no world without Korea. If North Korea is attacked nuclearly by the United States, the world will end as we know it. So you meet him in Pyongyang, and then you go back to Europe, and yeah. then your second meeting is when you go to Spain. Yeah. Hello. We are here in Barcelona in front of Hotel Astoria, and we just have a wonderful meeting with um, our colleague, Ulrich, discussing matters of interest. Can you tell me a little bit about that meeting? I was in a small hotel in the outskirts of Barcelona. And we talked like two or three hours. Um, of course, a lot about North Korea. And... So I had a meeting with the 
Din gode spanske kammerat Alejandro Carlo dør binders. And then he starts telling me about Anders. Så man må sige, at han er rimelig godt inde i, hvad Anders han har foretaget sig gennem morgenen, og kan se, at Anders han ikke udvikler sig eller kommer med nye tiltag. Og det må jeg også give ham ret i. Så so what did Alejandro want from you? He, he didn't want me to um, be the um, official delegate, as they pronounce it in KFA in Denmark. Mm -hmm. Og derfor så starter jeg stille og roligt op på min egen KFA, Danmark. Øh, hvor jeg selvfølgelig bliver udnævnt af Alicanto, og jeg vil blive en af hans nærmeste. Og også internationalt vil han gerne have mig til at stå for mere og skabe nogle kontakter. And so the mole began tunneling his way through the Korean Friendship Association, hoping to find the secrets of this global club for friends of Pyongyang. Long live our Supreme Commander Kim Jong-un. <laughs> then last speech, Ulrich Larsen. Ulrich, do you think you had a speech on behalf of the Yeah. Mm. My name is Ulrich Larsen and I'm a new uh, Say a new friends of KFA in Denmark, um, and I'm really happy to be here and could speak at this annual meeting. Jonas, if we film here, we will just say hi. Yeah, it will be fun. Just don't cover. I mean, it should be full portrait. You should. You must not take portraits. Okay. Alejandro, good to see you again. Thank you. Very pleased to be here. Always, you know. Yes. Thank you. Advised by me, the mole had a professional cameraman enrolled in KFA Denmark as his personal assistant. Is Alejandro aware of the personal aspects of your life? Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons he wants me to, because he thinks I have a lot of time to... to be the North Korean man in Scandinavia. A lot of time, because in his real life, the mole is a retired chef who lives on welfare subsidies from the government because of some sort of chronic disease which prevents him from working. He is married with children and resides in the suburbs of Copenhagen, living a seemingly normal life. As such, he is the best mole you could ever want. It's a long fight against the Danish media. Whenever they have the chance to print imperialistic propaganda... Actually, many of the persons in the KFA are unemployed. Your leader Kim Jong-il always fought the best among the, the eternal president Kim Il-sung. General Kim Jong-il as the supreme commander of the Korean People's Army. Leader Kim Il-sung had to get outside of Korea for this is hot. I think they find something unique with him because like, they feel themselves welcome. Everyone loves the cause. Exactly. become more proud and go more strong, you know, until we achieve the final victory. Thank you. Thank you. I um, participated in annual meetings in the KFA around Europe. I'm calling Ulrich Lassen, our official delegate in Denmark, nuestro delegado oficial in Denmark. Esta medalla, Ulrich, please show your medal. And two years after, I went the KFA delegate of Scandinavia. So he gave me four countries. That's quite a quick leap up, isn't it? It, it went quite fast, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so what were your responsibilities in that? He wants me, of course, to um, react to the media. Mm -hmm. If they, you know, all the lies in North, the team with the North Korean eyes. Uh, this is Ulrich out of Copenhagen. Here's what he had to say. In North Korea, you have many good things that you've never seen. I just came back here from from a month ago, and I I was surprised to see how um, how bright the future looks for the North Korea. So Andre, he's really picking up on that theme that Dermot had about a smear against North Korea. Well, the Jonas is making 
small uh, video clips, so I know we will make one, so we will put out on the Facebook so you can all share for today. Do you happen to know if he's told his wife what he was doing? I don't think so. Mm. Når man er i Nordkorea, så går folk og lugter grimt. Øh, ikke grimt på den måde, men deres parfumer, de er sådan lidt... Øh, de er meget, der er sådan meget spritet lugt. Og så var jeg så heldig at få sådan en af min far. Så jeg har gjort det lidt til en tradition, at når jeg er ude med... Øh, i det her regi, så får den lige et par sprøjt, inden jeg går ned til møde, så giver lugten mig en eller anden idé om, at... Nu er jeg i Nordkorea, eller i under den nordkoreanske fane. What did your wife say when you went home smelling of that strange scent? She's told another story. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell her the truth, because then she wouldn't let me go. Hi. Nå, jamen, vi er færdige for i dag, og vi er godt udkørt. Det har været lang, en lang mødedag med en masse sjove okay. informationer. Ja, okay. okay. Og børnene er glade? Okay. Ja, ja, vi har lige været klivende. Ja, det er godt. Så, ja, ja. Så ja, det var godt. Ja. Yes, yes. Ja, jamen, jeg ringer. Jamen, vi snakkes ved i morgen, ikke? Eller senere. Ja, okay. Ja, det er godt. Ja. Hej. Hej. Why does Alejandro like them all? What does he see in them all? He wants me to find um, people that like to invest money in North Korea. Alejandro Cautabinas begins putting pressure on them all. He wants them to source for businessmen who will invest in North Korea. So the main part really is raising business and yeah. investment. In a debriefing filmed in Denmark back in 2013, the mole was already talking about KFA President Alejandro Cautabinas wanting him to find investors. Men umiddelbart så er det, taler han faktisk uden at nævne nogen, så er det tre øh, interessante investeringsprojekter, der er i Nordkorea. Hvilke? Det, 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 det siger han så ikke noget, men han søger bare noget kapitalsang, der hedder fra 50.000 euro op til en million euro. But investing in North Korea is tricky business because of the tough UN sanctions leveled against the cash-starved regime. The new sanctions include a ban on exports of North Korean goods such as machinery and electrical equipment. Since no one in the right mind would throw money at North Korea, I decided to invent a fake investor in order for the mole to find out what exactly Alejandro Cautabinas had in mind. I forgot to mention there is another person involved in this. That person is Mr. James. His real name is Jim, and he was chosen by me to perform the role as Mr. James, a man of international mystery. In real life, Jim is a former member of the French Foreign Legion, who later went on to become a jet set cocaine pusher in Copenhagen. In the end, he was caught and served eight years in jail, and now works and lives as a legitimate businessman. In my mind, he was tailor-made for extreme role-playing. So I had the mole invite Alejandro to come to Oslo in Norway for a meeting with the man of his dreams, Mr. James, a dapper Scandinavian oil billionaire. So how did you set it up? At that moment, I knew James for five hours. Mm -hmm. um, I met him in the airport in the morning, okay. and we we wasn't even sitting together in the plane. I, the plan was that I should introduce Alejandro to James and mm -hmm. James to Alejandro. So we and then just sit back and watch. Well, exactly. What kind of investments into North Korea would President Alejandro Cautabinas have on offer for Mr. James? Køer. 
Oh, I hope it's oh, good. You, you're used to it. I'm not. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh I'm nervous. <laughs> Oh, hi there. Come in, come in, thanks. Yes. I just have to say this. Yes. Okay, thanks. Sorry for that. Hi, James. Okay. Pleasure okay. to Hello, meet you. This and is James. Thank you for um, coming. Thanks. Thank you for that. This, this is Alejandro, the, yeah. Yeah. the yeah. president of KFA. I'm a special lead of the government of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea in charge of international Thank relations. you very much. And I would have loved for giving you a card, but my suitcase is still in Kuala Lumpur, so I just <laughs> have my hand baggage. No but problem. by mail, I, uh, we will send it to you. No problem. Okay. Sorry, just to interrupt, but what sort of cover story had you developed for oh. James? I mean, Alejandro presumably would have done some checking on the background of James. I think he really just wants things to happen, and he, he wasn't... He was thinking about having something for the Korean so he can reach an even higher level in North Korea. So he didn't need to know the name of this oil billionaire? No, I just told him actually his name was James. Huh. I, I work for an uh, investment mm -hmm. uh, family. Until now, our investment has been in oil, mm -hmm. gas, weapons, metal, pharmaceutical. Mm -hmm. But our minimum investment mm -hmm. is 50 million uh, euro. Five zero. Yeah, five zero. Because otherwise the revenue is, is not interesting. Mm. I have contacts up to our Marshal Kim Jong un. So if necessary, I can report directly to the maximum authority to our great leader Kim Jong un in the country. We are under very, very heavy sanctions, as you may know, from the United Nations, especially as forced by the United States. So we have a parallel uh, way to do things. We have uh, companies in China, in Southeast Asia, in Malaysia, and other countries for making all kinds of transactions. So they follow sanctions in the United Nations in the front of the TV, but in reality, they just look the other way. Did he discuss what types of business he would be looking for? Yeah. And it didn't take many minutes before Alejandro started talking about that they can produce anything in North Korea which he likes to call the DPR of Korea, mm -hmm. or DPRK. Mm -hmm. Our advantage, think about DPRK as the real only country in the world that we don't need to follow any rule from anyone. Whatever you do in DPRK remains in DPRK. Nobody ever can touch your accounts, your assets, even you are followed by Interpol. We are not even members of Interpol. So we can do things that no other country can do. We are developing things in uh, pharmaceutical industry that are forbidden in any other country in the world. I have a pharmaceutical company in Canada that requested me uh, that we produce something in DPRK. But this something, it's basically the same like methamphetamine. It's a methamphetamine for the drug market. So the issue is that they send me the formula or the knowledge and then I check with our capital, of course. We have all the knowledge to produce, even that. Weapons, actually, is our main, but the problem is weapons, in the moment that you, it's a it's very, very uh, the complicated subject. But weapons, we can build submarines factories. We can build ta ta tank factories. We have, from the first screw of the tank to the last one, is made in the PRK. Missiles all made in DPRK. We sell our missiles to Iran. Iran doesn't have our technology. All the medium range, Iran only has medium range. We have intercontinental ballistic missiles that can reach any part of the world. So, we okay, have to... Okay, okay, uh, that, mm -hmm. that one we definitely have to... Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just taking notes. I can facilitate you all kind of contacts directly with our state companies or any department or ministry in the country. This is no problem for me. Anytime I can issue the visas, I can prepare at all levels with all our ministers. So you, through me, you, you are right now in direct contact with the country. Meeting with President Alejandro Cautabenos in Oslo gave a whole new perspective on the Korean Friendship Association. Because officially the KFA is a peaceful organization which works to promote North Korean culture, history and values through its members in more than 30 different countries.
including the official delegate for all of Scandinavia, the mole. Was the KFA really being used as a front for dealing with weapons and drugs from North Korea, with Alejandro as the spider in the web? Or was Alejandro Caudebinas playing us in order to get to the deep pockets of Mr. James? And who was Alejandro really? Simply a buffoonish braggart acting as a useful idiot for the regime in Pyongyang? Or was he a highly connected and sophisticated international criminal? At last, the mole had found his real mission and true purpose. Follow the lead of Alejandro Caudebinas and see where it takes us. So what happened after this meeting? When Alejandro came back to Spain, he was arrested okay. of uh, arms dealing. Así ha reaccionado Alejandro Cao de Venos ante las preguntas de nuestra compañera a las puertas de los juzgados. Ayer fue detenido en Tarragona en una operación policial contra el tráfico de armas. No respondo a tres minutos. Por algún motivo en este. Sí, porque son difamadores. Eso es falso. Falso totalmente. Son difamadores. Esto es falso total. For the first time ever, the brave soldiers of the KFA would have their annual meeting without their president. A perfect chance for the mole to rise in the ranks. I'd like to welcome you all to 2016's International KFA Conference. Over the years, our organizations have been viciously attacked by reactionaries. This year's worst attack is towards our president Alejandro. The Spanish fascist authorities are not letting him leave the country restricting his uh, movement of freedom and um, accusing him of a crime he had not committed. Maybe one day they will understand that we're right and that they are wrong, but until then, keep on with a good job, comrades. Thank you. If it was not for Comrade Alejandro, I would not be standing here today. I commend him for constantly believing in me, supporting me and guiding me. In the future, I foresee more people of the West, just like me, will realize that they live inside a broken and evil system. And so they will open their eyes and see what I see, a dream which can come true. Long live our Supreme General Kim Jong-un, Korea is one. Thank you very much. Alejandro, it's Ulrich. Whatever I can do to help you in KFA, just let me know. I'm, I'm, I will be there. Thank you. You are we always really crack on with you and trust all your work and your activities. So it's uh, not only me, of course, my comrades in Pyongyang. Yeah. It's no, we don't have very close friends like you. We are only a few that really, really oh, thank close you very friends much. of the country. I feel the same back. I, I love you all in KFA. Next, the mole and Mr. James went to Madrid in Spain to meet with Alejandro Cao de Benos. Through me, Mr. James had an order ready for North Korean weapons as well as methamphetamine. Would the president of the Korean Friendship Association be open for business now that he was being investigated for arms trafficking? Okay. <laughs> I can see you. Oh, hello. <laughs> so, Alejandro took James entirely on trust on your recommendation. We need to put up a story. How I know James. And, and what was that story? I'm educated as a chef mm -hmm. and um, been making food for some people where James went sending. And he just asked me if I can cook for him because he has a lot of parties and. So it's quite easy to, to get into that. Mm -hmm. Always busy. I haven't seen him long time only, you know, short telephone, email, and he don't reply email. Hey, my oh, friend. Once again. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm sorry. We... 
Sit down. See. I continuously follow by different secret services from different countries. So they retain my passport. The order of the judge is that I cannot leave the Spanish territory because I had weapons. I had machine guns and I had uh, guns at home. And I, I always liked uh, uh, all kind of weapons and practice. Who doesn't? <laughs> so at this meeting in Madrid, yeah. does James give any ideas about why he wants, why he's interested in buying this sort of materiel? Well, he likes to um, to sell the weapons to the um, enemy of Israel, which make Alejandro quite happy. Basically, it's the weapon mm -hmm. we're very, very yeah. interesting in. Hitting Israel is a way to say fuck you, USA. Yeah. Yes. We need to sit down with the right people straight away. Yes. Our uh, army, they are used to sell Finnish technology to governments. So it's going to be complicated to negotiate the sale of whatever uh, short or medium range missiles with a private person. But talking about chemistry and components that you need, that's more easy. Because kind of we are providing technology and we are providing you with experts that you rent, but we are not selling the fire finish. Ah, okay. So, okay. That's fine for me. Well, I can guarantee you that uh, you will have the meetings with the right people and that it is possible to bring those scientists, let's call them, overseas. But, of course, the terms of negotiation is something you have to arrange. But actually, you are being received by my closest comrade and he knows what you are going to be discussing about. He knows him mm -hmm. also, Ori Tongji, because he's Kang Hyung Yu. So Mr. Kang Hyung Yu, he will be waiting for you in the airport and arrange everything to talk with the right people. From now on, we are, we, we, we are on thin ice. Yes. We, we have to be very careful. Yes. But that said, there's a lot of money to be made. <laughs> At this point, he's stuck in Spain. Yeah. For legal reasons. Yeah. But he can organize your trip with James to yeah. North Korea. We agreed to go to North Korea in mm -hmm. January 2017. Okay. Going on a secret mission to North Korea calls for careful planning. So I had my first in-person meeting with the Mole and Mr. James together, making sure that Mr. James especially knew the most important rules of the game. Let's start with this in heat banale, but it's important to have gaver with. And one of the best things you can give North Korea is his contact. Jeg vil sige, tag mindst en flaske konjak med hver. Noget andet, som er vigtigt i Nordkorea, aldrig lave sjov med den store leder, den kære leder eller nogen generelt. Ingen, ingen af kimmerne må man lave sjov med. Man vil helt sikkert være i situationer, hvor man har lyst til at komme med en morsom bemærkning. Det skal man bare ikke. Don't go there. Okay. Noget tredje er, øh, det er en meget militariseret kultur, og det er en meget alkoholiseret kultur. Der, der er næppe et land i verden, hvor de drikker så meget som i Nordkorea. Hvis man er dårlig til at drikke, hvad skal man sige, mister selvkontrollen, når man bliver fuld, skal man ikke tage til Nordkorea. Aldrig skjulte optagelser. Aldrig falde for fristelsen til at, at forsøge at lave noget i det skjulte. Jo mindre I fremprovokerer noget, jo bedre. Jo mere de kommer til jer, jo bedre. Det er jo ikke mig, der skal købe noget. Det er dem, der skal sælge noget. Lige præcis. Hi, Jim. I'm Annie. Pleasure to meet you. Lovely to meet you, too. If we could keep the answers as brief as possible and as precise as possible, that would be appreciated. Sure. So, what was your perception of the possible risk at this point? Yeah, I mean, as a former criminal, you don't calculate with risk that high. <laughs> um, and I, I think I actually was more worried for, for Ulrich than for myself, because he invo was involved or is involved in another way than I was. I was hired in as an actor. I was also worried for the mole. Mr. James had been around the block. He could fend for himself. But what about the mole? 
He was just a retired chef. So I took him to see a teacher who could give him a crash course in what is known as tradecraft among spies. In short, I took him to see Max, a former CIA agent. He makes a mistake, he could find himself tied up in the center of town with a blowtorch as an example for nobody else to do that. So. But why trust a former CIA agent with the identity and secrets of the mole? It's a good question. Max had been fired from the Central Intelligence Agency and was not in good standing with the company anymore, which made it safer to trust him. I'm going to kill you. Why? OK, yep. Anyway, I was in need of someone who could teach the mole the ropes before he returned to North Korea. If somebody's holding a gun on you, you're not going to expect them to take it away, all right? All you're looking for is a split-second edge. And besides, as the saying goes, who can you trust these days? Observation skills. But I say what's common is common, yeah. and what ain't, ain't. That means if it's common, that's usual for the area, OK, that's normal. If something stands out, it stands out for a reason. So you got to be aware of your surroundings. You might as well give them your phone and say, here, look at it, because that's how easy it is nowadays. You have to assume they can read all of your messages. So when they look at your emails accounts, and they can go way, 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 way back, they're going to feel like you betrayed them. You didn't really believe in, in socialism or communism. You didn't really believe in North Korea as a place to go. You didn't really believe in it. That was all just you were a mole. Be careful that they don't set a trap for you. So like when they walk out of the room and leave papers, don't touch them, don't go near them. Then they can say, oh, we knew he was going to go through these. You don't care about those. Don't even think about messing with that. I tell you what, you are a hero of mine doing this. It's very dangerous. So this is the real deal. Yeah. Safe journey. Thank Safe you, journey. Max. Godspeed. Thank you. Bye. Bye now. Right in the middle of these anxieties, an American university student was arrested in North Korea. Son was sentenced to hard labor for stealing a propaganda poster. The warm beer. His crime was simply stealing a poster from his hotel in Pyongyang. Another American front and center in Pyongyang's propaganda parade. I entirely thank you for the government of the DPR Korea for your forgiveness. Otto Frederick Warmbier, a University of Virginia business major, making a dramatic, emotional confession. Please save this poor, ethnic scapegoat. Think of my family. Warmbier's parents issued a statement saying they were relieved. Really So can you tell me what happened when you got there? We were landing in a brand new airport in Pyongyang, three steps out of a flight. We were put to side because I had the camera. This officer, he was like, because of the camera, he needs to call his um, the high ranking officer to check that out. When we landed there, two government officials came, took my suitcase off the table. We went all the way around and they put me in the VIP lounge where the main man himself, when he travels, sits. 
And then we've been waiting five minutes, and then Kang said, do you have your medal on? Show him. Is that? That is Mr. Kang. OK. And I was, like, taking off my jacket, and he was like, oh. sorry, mm -hmm. please, welcome to North Korea. And I just took all my equipment without any check and, and, and walked straight out for waiting Mercedes-Benz to pick us up. first evening, I had a great dinner with a lot of alcohol. I went up earlier than James to my room, and Kang then came up to my room and asked me, are, are you sure that this man has mm -hmm. all the money that he's talking about? So how did um, the deal progress once you were there? Well, in the beginning, it was just sightseeing and looking at houses and business centers. Kang, could you tell shortly where we are going? Uh, now we are going to visit the uh, Science and Technology Complex, which was uh, inaugurated uh, last year. At this point, I didn't see anything close to everything I was promised. So how long did this, um, should we call it a courtship period I think last? Two days. Two days. And then it's starting okay. getting serious. Certainly, the third morning we got picked up. We were looking at each other, like, okay, is this another sightseeing or what? When we are in the car, he said, we're going to meet some people that can sort you out. All the time we've been in North Korea, we've been driving downtown. Now we're starting driving outside town. And then suddenly we take a left turn. And now it's not in a place where you want to show tourists. And they drove us outside of Pyongyang into a slum area. So the driver park. No, this doesn't seem right, but I mean, nowhere to run, so I'm just like, okay, just focus. and they want us to walk down in a basement. 
uh, and walking down this uh, stairs, and it was really creepy. But then a big door opened, and we came into this luxury conference room with a big table with a lot of food and... And suddenly we are in a really, really nice restaurant. Under a basement yeah, in, in a, a very, rotting house. Yeah. Were you frightened? I try not to be. <laughs> then we found out we were sitting together with the, the president from the arms factory. Is this when this photograph was taken? Yes, that's So the can project. you tell me who is who? This is the, um, the president of the arms factory. Mm -hmm. This one is the intelligence officer. Mm -hmm. His English was really good. His questions was definitely different of the other, and he kind of started interrogating me. Mm. And is in that time I have to come up with a company name because we didn't have a company name at that time. Okay. So he says, what's your company name? I said, the one who's taking care of this is Target Group. <laughs> I was like, please remember that name. <laughs> then there was one we referred to as Stoneface. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 I, I, I... Then they surprised us by taking off the catalog of their weapon systems. And I was like, okay. They give me pictures. They say, this is what we can sort you out with. Like a sort of menu? Yeah. Okay. And what sort of weapons are we talking about? All kinds of weapons. Missiles. Really big missiles. Tanks. So this is all on offer? Yeah, this is what we were just handed over at the table in. Wow, so we've got Scud missiles. Yeah. So you can get five Scud missiles for $14 million. Missile launchers? Yeah. So we're going up to Scud E missiles now. Yeah. Good God, 25 million. 1,350 kilometers range. Yeah. That's practically enough for North Korea to Japan. And that's... High explosive warhead, and that's thermobaric. Yeah. Oof. I mean, that's as close as you can get to a nuke. Yeah. Without it being a nuke. What's this? Uh, this is the uh, agreement between uh, James and, mm -hmm. and Narea. The, the arms side. factory. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All signed and sealed as well. Yes. And what was Ulrich doing during this meeting when you were signing contracts? He was filming. He was allowed to film? See, this is the funny part, because Ulrich's position is so well that they just thought he filmed for propaganda videos. Should I sign the Korean one as well? Yes. And, and where's that? At this point, you're in a secret underground lair in North Korea, facilitating the signature of a weapons contract. What is going through your head at this stage? Many things. First of all, I've been practically lying for my wife for seven years. So I was thinking about that. And Alejandro is aware of all of this. He's aware of everything. Mm -hmm. And I will soon go to Spain to visit Alejandro Donkey and give him a detailed report about what we achieved here together with James. Score! 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 Good, thank you. So 
So we agreed on building a factory outside North Korea that would uh, make weapons and methamphetamine. Oh. And as is custom for them, they suggest it will definitely be underground. And did the Koreans have any preferences when it came to countries or suggestions? The first destination that came up was Namibia, mm -hmm. where they had uh, friendly people in the government. That was taken off the table due to the sanctions. So the next country that was put on the table was um, Uganda. So to sum it up, you are now a North Korean weapons dealer and broker. Yes. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Monday night. And we begin with late developments today, the worsening horror for a mother and father from Ohio. Their son, who was just returned from North Korea with severe brain damage, has now died. Since the moment their son was sentenced to hard labor for stealing a propaganda poster, the warm beers were fighting until he was released. The look in his eyes, which I didn't know he was blind at the time, was absolute horror. Horror, like he'd seen the devil, and he had. He was with the devil. Jamen, så starter vi vel med at sige velkommen tilbage. Mange tak. Tak. Back in Copenhagen, I was shocked to discover what my two proxies had accomplished in Pyongyang. They had brought real raw intelligence with them. As the scholar Andrea Berger writes in her study, Target Markets, very little is known about pricing on North Korean weapon systems. But here was a fully detailed menu in hard copy. Mr. James being appointed as a North Korean arms broker seemed like the figment of a sick mind, but here also was a signed and sealed contract drawn up in English by the North Koreans. Before Mr. James came along, only a few non-Koreans had been known to broker weapons for the regime in Pyongyang. Back in 2011, the British arms dealer Michael Ranger was arrested for brokering a deal between Azerbaijan and North Korea, but he was a highly experienced arms dealer in a dangerous game for experts, let alone amateurs. Nevertheless, Mr. James and the Mole had scored a jackpot. I was brought to, or found a position. I have the title of Honorary Position of Business Agent for Narea Trading Cooperation. This title will I carry on bring to my dear friend Alejandro, for we have agreed in Korea that I will meet with Alejandro and make a report about the visit. Hello, Hello. Good. How are you? Perfect. Welcome to the bunker. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the bunker. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's hot here. We have minus 21 in Pyongyang when we were there. Oh, really? To prepare the mole for his next mission, Alejandro would now provide guidance on how to operate as a businessman in Uganda. In Africa, nobody is going to take care of you. No. The life of James, your life, my life, is worth 50 US dollars. Okay. That's what it costs to hire a hitman, a hitman and, and cut your throat. Literally cut your throat. And don't forget that they are quite strong because yeah. they work all the day under the yeah. sun. Yeah, huh? yeah. taking the bush and everything. So yeah. the Negro has that thing. Okay. In the moment that you don't look at them, they will steal you. Okay. Everything, even a drop of water. And they need always to have the person on top of them telling them what they have to do. Okay. If not, they just sleep or steal. Sleep yeah. or steal. If the white master is not there, they will feel like animals and start destroying, taking all. Okay. Hmm? So actually he needs to be really, really careful of who to bring in. Yes, okay. yes. Very careful, and if one person is going to appoint it, there has to be, has to, be the person, okay. frankly speaking, willing to die for. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what's yeah. the idea of <clears throat> the idea the is front? to make the um, yes. methamphetamine mm. and 
what weapons. Mm -hmm. When talking about the business, do never use again that words, okay? I don't know. I think you should take care. Suddenly, he just stood up and said he wants to show me something. This is a bug detector. It will detect any kind of the of bugs that you may carry in your body or someone okay. may have put to you. Okay. If you yeah. had a micro or something in you, oh, okay. it will make the signal. Okay. 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 Ah, okay. Perfect. You were mic'd up. I was mic'd yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. Try my phone. Ah, okay. Here's a signal. 